Hello and welcome. If you ask me, repairing retro hardware makes a lot of fun. But the hardware is old and usually you can't just go and buy replacement parts. So the question is, where to get parts from? Often I just buy a pile of scrap somewhere and see what I'll get. And today I got a box where I expect to have some treasures. I paid only a couple of euros, but I saw on the pictures that there is at least one interesting part inside, hiding between the junk. Let's see what it is and if there are some nice surprises waiting for their second life. And here we go, already on the top of the box there seem to be a nice 286 mainboard. It is extremely dusty, but it is a definitely a 286 mainboard with headland chipset. Let's see which CPU do we have here. Under a thick layer of dust we reveal an Intel 286 CPU with 12 MHz. Overall condition seems to be good, aside from dust. A huge thank you to the previous owner for removing the barrel battery. If the battery would be still in the place the mainboard of this age would have already been heavily corroded. And as you can see it is absolutely clean. What do we have here? Both BIOS ROMs, the odd and the even seem to be removed. The keyboard controller is missing as well. And here we have slots for DIP and SIP memory modules. On the back I don't see any scratches, bumps or any other damage so far. Here you can indeed see some solder left from desoldering the battery. I'm very glad that it was done before the battery had a chance to leak. Please remember the rule, to save your hardware, remove the barrel battery. Ok, it looks very promising. I just have to wash the mainboard and do a detailed inspection of what is under the dust. Let's see what else do we have here. Some boards with the bigger capacitors, I think I could use them for another project. Ok, and here we have a graphics card. It is an OTI. A special spider edition customized with a fancy spider web. This card is one of the slowest, but it is still very interesting since it can work in both 16 and 8 bit ISO slots. And it has two output ports the one 9 pin for MGA, CGA, and EGA monitors, and one 15 pin port for VGA. So, um, what else do we have here? A lot of scrap from old TVs, radios, and probably hi fi audio. Here we have a very simple ISO sound card. It is based on Evans Logic chip and delivers actually a decent digital audio. However, FM quality is simply awful and is ages from original Yamaha OPL3. Ok, here is a super multi-IO controller for serial parallel and joystick ports, as well as floppy and IDE drives. I guess all these parts are coming from the same computer. And this is by far not as old as the other parts, but still a nice part. This is the ASUS P2B mainboard for slot 1, Pentium 2 and 3 processors. This mainboard is based on Intel 440BX chipset and in my opinion it is one of the best mainboards for the CPUs. This part is by far not as dusty as the 286 mainboard and at first glance it looks good, the capacitor seems to be in good shape. This mainboard is actually a high quality product and stands the time quite good. I wonder if it's still working. Well, everything else in the box seems to be less interesting. A lot of electronic parts to salvage for replacement though. Well, the parts are by far too dirty for further analysis. You can't see anything even on the very close look. So time to wash everything in a soapy bath. After washing the parts I left them drying outside for a couple of hours. And here we go, everything's clean and shiny again. Also no spider web anymore on the graphics card and all the other cards are also looking as good as new. Closer look at the 286 mainboard didn't reveal anything suspicious. No blown caps, no damage traces, no corrosion. It looks really as good as new. All the memory slots and the bio sockets are empty so I'll have to find something to fill the empty spaces. Oh yeah, and um, the keyboard controller is missing as well so I also need a replacement therefore. Usually you can't just take any BIOS ROMs, because everyone is designed for a particular mainboard. However, sometimes they are so similar that they can fit into different mainboards. I have a box with various ICs collected over time. There I have also a 286 BIOS ROMs and a keyboard controller, which I could try in this mainboard, before I go searching for original ROMs. If I'm lucky, it could already be sufficient. But before we start and connect the power supply, Let's check for short circuits. If you have an old mainboard, please always start with testing for shorts to avoid further damage or even fire. 
Okay, and everything seems to be good. We have no short circuits on the main rails. Now back to the ROMs. There are two of them on the main board. You can see markings high and low. Back in the day, the ROMs were often split into two parts, so called high and low, sometimes also called odd and even. What meant is the order of the bytes, since every second byte was written on the other EEPROM. So all odd or low bytes were located on the first EEPROM and all even or high bytes were on the second one. As you can hopefully see, there are markings on the BIOS ROM ICs, which one is high and which one is low, so we know which chip goes into which socket. I'll add some context spray to clean the context before inserting the chips. Let's give it a short power on to try to see if our BIOS is any useful in this mainboard at all. And as you can see, we have some post codes on the analyzer which reveals that the mainboard initializes. This means that our random BIOS is at least sufficient to drive this mainboard to some extent. This is already very promising, so let's clean the memory socket contacts and add some memory. I have here some deep memory chips and I can insert one megabyte of memory into the board. I could find a short documentation online. This main board seems to be an ELT-286B-120GM and it accepts up to 4 megabytes of RAM. Here is the memory table. I inserted 8 chips each 128 kilobyte into bank 0 and 2. Furthermore, 4 parity chips went into bank 1 and 3. All in all, we should have now 1 megabyte of memory, so we just have to set up the DIP switches accordingly. Let's power on and see if we get further. One long and two short beeps. I believe it means missing graphics adapter. That would mean that the memory test was successful. Now everything should be ready for the complete test. I'll take a VGA card, which I know is working. The other graphics adapter, which was in the scrap, I will test later. It is always worth it to add or replace one part at a time to avoid false conclusions later. And as you can see, this mainboard is back to life. We are getting through the power on self-test. It just complains about the bad battery, but it is okay, since there is currently no battery connected. Funny enough, our random bias seemed to work so far. Okay, time to test the graphics card, which we got from scrap. And as you see, this seemed to work either. Now the IDE controller. I'll connect my compact flash to IDE adapter with MS-DOS on it to be able to boot to something, if the controller is working. Well, unfortunately, I can't see how I can set up the hard drive geometry in this BIOS. There are pretty fine configurations there, but unfortunately, no way to set custom values. Let's give XT IDE a go. I'll connect an external battery to the mainboard to avoid further post errors and insert a network card with a prepared XT IDE ROM to check if the system can boot from that. If you're not familiar with XT IDE, I highly recommend you to watch the series of videos which I made about it. I'll put the link into the description. Uh, well, unfortunately, nothing happens, just disk boot failure. Mm, maybe there is some issue with the IDE controller. I'll replace it with one which I know is working. And luckily, XT IDE did recognize the compact flash card, and we finally can boot into DOS. Mm, the main board seems to be functional, however, I don't like this strange BIOS, where you can't set up anything. Not only that I couldn't enter custom HDD settings, I even was not able to set up time and date. Let's try, just for fun, a BIOS from another DAD286 main board, which I have in my scrap. The BIOS seems already a lot better. I can set up all the essential things. However, during the pause, it shows 1.5 megabytes of RAM, which is really odd, since I only installed 1 megabyte. Furthermore, it hangs completely trying to boot the operation system, and in the system configuration overview, there are, again, very strange DRAM numbers. So I guess this BIOS just doesn't fit. Well, off-camera, I experimented with different BIOS images. On Vogons.org, I even found apparently original BIOS from this mainboard, but it didn't post properly. So I tried some other BIOS versions from another mainboard with the same headland chipset. And finally, I found one which works very well. 
It is from Octac Fox M286, very similar mainboard to the one I got here. It boots perfectly fine. You can set all the important BIOS configuration and set up HDD. It even works fine with the IDE controller, which was in the same box with this mainboard and which completely refused to work with the other BIOS, even with XT IDE. I tried some games and programs. After one hour of running, I didn't experience any instabilities or other problems. The hardware ran rock solid, though 12 MHz CPU became relatively hot. In the end, I'm really happy with this catch. It shows what a wonderful gems you can find sometimes in a box of junk. I hope this hardware will keep running long and make some retro fan happy. Unfortunately, I couldn't identify the graphics card properly. It is an OTI 037C1, but it has some magic jumpers where I don't know what they are doing. Also, the IDE controller is kind of unknown. If you search under the name GW2760, you'll find some parts which are definitely not the same as this one. So the jumpers on the controller remain unknown for now as well. If you can help me to identify these parts, please write into the comments below. And this is actually it for the 286 parts. However, as a bonus, in case you still remember, it came out that the ASUS P2B mainboard is also completely working. After washing and drying the board, my visual inspection didn't uncover any issues. The board instantly powered on and ran stable. One issue, however, was that the Pentium 3 was recognized as Pentium 2. However, this was an easy fix updating the BIOS to the latest version. During my test, I was once again impressed how fast and stable this mainboard is. If you search for a good Pentium 2 or 3 mainboard, consider this one as a good option. And that's it for today from me. I hope you enjoyed it and just as always, please leave your feedback below. If you like my channel, please help me to reach wider audience and don't forget to put your likes or dislikes. So far, I hope to see you on my channel again. Thank you and goodbye.